Madam Chair, and thank you, Ms. Weigert, for uh, coming here today. Uh, while I support the administration's dedication to improving efficiency and streamlining government bureaucracy, the proposal to spin off federal responsibility and congressional oversight for operating our air traffic control functions as written in the reform plan is inconsistent with that goal by putting national security, safety, accessibility, and efficiency of our national airspace in jeopardy. The reform plan states that privatizing air traffic control operations would reduce transportation fragmentation across government. This fragmentation refers to the vital relationship between the FAA and Department of Defense to protect the national airspace in tandem by sharing airspace, training systems, assets, equipment, and information. This is made possible by their mutual status as federal agencies within the federal government. By divorcing ATC functions from the government and thus Department of Defense, each shared interest would be subjected to a yet unknown established process of coordination, which could leave our nation vulnerable to cybersecurity and physical attack. It would also create a potential multi-billion dollar unfunded liability for Department of Defense to update its own systems in coordination with these new processes. Instead of reducing fragmentation, air traffic control privatization compromises the interoperability that Department of Defense and other agencies such as the FBI, Homeland Security, the DEA, and our intelligence services currently enjoy. Instead of jointly developing the technologies of spectrum vital to our national security, privatization of ATC separates and complicates them. Furthermore, past proposals have also diminished the powers of the president and reduced his vital oversight as well as Congress's to protect the national security of our airspace against nefarious cyber actors in times of national duress such as the 9-11 terrorist attack. Instead of the president, the FAA, and the military being able to rapidly make decisions such as September 2001, the emergency would first have to navigate its way through a private board, something that is not only unrealistic but dangerous. The proposal to streamline Department of Transportation by privatizing ATC functions is intended to better enable our aviation system to respond to consumer needs and modernize services. And while we embrace modernization efforts to improve cost efficiency, the lengthy process of privatizing would be counterproductive to those ends, especially given that modernization under NextGen is well on track. Instead, it would result in industry uncertainty, significant costs to the federal government, and a slower pace for next-gen implementation. FAA Administrator and next-gen uh, Chairman Ed Bolden warned that such a transition could take seven years and hand over billions of dollars of taxpayer paid for infrastructure to a private entity, while industry would be unable to update technology and procedures. The aviation industry cannot afford to lose time or resources in these indirect efforts. It would much better be served in investing these years and dollars directly into an already unfolding and modernizing next-gen implementation. While language in the reform plan advocates privatized ATC systems such as those in Canada and other places, it is important to note that there can be no comparison with the 88,000 flights a day in the United States to those of 9,000 in Canada, most of which originate or terminate in the United States handled by our system, or even the 35,000 in Europe, when combined with Canada don't even equal half of U.S. air traffic. The U.S. airspace is not only the largest, busiest, and most complex in the world, it is also the safest and most accessible. This is in large part due to the public structure of the system, including its accountability to this Congress and the FAA and its mission to provide reliable air traffic services to a wide range of users and communities across our nation. For these reasons, Congress has recently, historically, and repeatedly rejected legislative efforts to privatize our nation's air traffic control systems. Language for privatization in the 21st Century Air Act held up FAA reauthorization for over a year in the House, and it faced stiff bipartisan opposition in both the House and the Senate. Any further attempt at ATC privatization would be redundant and a waste of legislative efforts, and also reduces the very powers of the President that the President is trying to reform. While we appreciate and support reorganization as an opportunity for much needed government reform, we will continue to oppose any attempt, those advocates and allies of this system, to privatize it in the United States for this fundamental reason. Our national airspace belongs to we, the people, not a private company. And Madam Chairman, I yield back my time.